Icon here going over NXT TakeOver in your house. Uh, a couple of matches. I think we got five or six matches on the card. Um, it started early. started at 7 o'clock. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it and talk about the first match of this pay-per-view. So for the opening match, and I was surprised that I was, you know, kudos to them because I thought if we were going to get a pre-show match, like I figured this would have been the pre-show match. The opening match for the pay-per-view, because there was no pre-show match, was a six-woman tag between uh, Dakota Kai, her um, her um, her henchman, I can't remember the girl name, <laughs> Candice LeRae versus Chauncey Blackheart, um, Mia Yim, and and who the, who the other girl? Tegan, Tegan Knox. So and, you know, so the, it was, and, and and that makes sense because the six of them have had this ongoing thing for like you know for months now. So uh, you know, and and obviously they did the one on one between Candice and Mia Yim already on regular NXT, so they weren't going to give us that again. So I like the six women. I like the six um the six women tag because it gives more women um, more of a chance to you know more of a chance to shine and you know and to showcase themselves. Now, but if Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai are going to go through this whole we're still not friends, like, we're still beef, and we're still enemies, they gotta stop coloring their hair at the same time, because both of them colored their hair the same damn color, and I love red, but I'm just like, one of y'all could have picked a different color, so it's like, y'all still doing friend shit, but you're supposed to make us believe on TV that you're really enemies, but that's, uh, that's my dude, so anyway, I said it was, it was a good match, you know, like I said, like, each girl got a chance to showcase themselves, they got a chance to, like, further their feuds, and in the end, um, Tegan Knox hit Dakota Kai with the shiniest wizard, put her out, and then, you know, Tegan Knox's team got the 1-2-3 victory. Candice LeRae did not get pinned, which means the feud between her, Mia Yim, and the boys will continue going further. So the next match was Finn Balor versus Damian Priest. And it was a good match. When <laughs> when Finn Balor came in, he um he tried to get the sneak attack on Priest, like, you know, he gave him the running, um, the running jump kick right to the chest. But on the two of them, had, like, Damian Priest came to play. Like, I, I, I gotta put some respect on his name. Like, because let's be honest, there wasn't a single person on this planet, including Damian Priest, that thought that, um, you know, that Finn Balor was gonna lose this match. Like, obviously, we all knew Finn Balor was going to, um, was gonna win this contest. So, <laughs> but the fact that Damian Priest put on a good show, it, it didn't sour the fact that he lost the match. So, you know, so again, Damian Priest, he'll be a player. Like, he'll get, um, he'll be a heavyweight champion soon enough. We just got, you know, we just, he just got to wait his turn. But Finn Balor moves on, and hopefully, um, they can fly Walter down to the Performance Center so he can pick up that Walter feud, because ever since the, um, you know, the, the pandemic happened, they just dropped the whole Walter thing, but Walter still got that belt, and I'm actually, like, the match I actually do want to see is Finn Balor versus Walter, so we'll see what happens, but Finn Balor got the, he got the win on Damian Priest, and we're moving forward. Next up, we had the North American Heavyweight Championship match between Johnny Gargano and Limitless Keith Lee. And this match was exactly what you thought it would be. Keith Lee throwing Johnny around like a rag doll. Johnny using every trick in the book. Candice came in, you know, to try, you know, to try to, um, to try to cheat. You know, Mia Yim came in to stop her. You know, the, uh, I noticed, um, you know, because they got the In Your House set, which actually is very cool, by the way. They got the In Your House set. I noticed that um, they bust The Rock's daughter out for the pay-per-view to sit in the audience. Uh, so that was uh, that was actually pretty funny when I saw that. Um, you know, but but in the end, you know, despite um, the trickery of the Gargano family, the Gargano way does not work tonight. Limitless Keith Lee picks up the 1-2-3 victory, and he defeats Johnny Gargano. But this feud will continue, which means Keith Lee got the first victory, and I guarantee most likely Johnny will get him the second time. But for right now, let's bask in the glory! of Keith Lee. So the next match, um, surprisingly, was for the NXT Heavyweight Championship. And right out the gate, as soon as I saw that the next match was for the was for the NXT Championship, the first thing that popped in my mind was like, "Gotta gave this bitch the main event." <laughs> so the women's mat, the women's title. So well, I'm, not, I'm not gonna say that. Charlotte is the main event of um of NXT. So that kind of that kind of sucks. But then um but then I was just like, wait, we still got the carry and cross match. So the men's match is like third it was like fourth. It was like the fourth match from the from the show. So and then, you know, between that, between them the, the NXT heavyweight championship match being the fourth match on the program, it was another Undertaker styles type match, only this time it actually had people present. You know, it was basically like one of those types of matches. And then I heard a rumor that the Velveteen Dream was going to get the call up. They were considering giving him the call up from, um, you know, for for the main roster. And they removed Velveteen Dream's picture 
from various, um, you know, from various advertisements that have to do with NXT. I was like, this is Adam Cole gonna win this damn title. This is some undisputed bullshit. So, I mean, and that's exactly what happened. As far as the match goes, again, it was basically Styles Taker style. They they set up a ring outside, just like they did Money in the Bank. There was a ring outside in the parking lot. They had all the NXT competitor, uh, all the um, all the NXT people, like the the ones that are that are pretending to be the audience. They had them. You know, like um, it's sitting in cars, and everybody had their um, their headlights um, shining on the ring. Cole and Dream came dressed in regular attire, like jeans and shoes and sneakers, and like they weren't wearing their wrestling attire. Um, the Undisputed Era interfered, like we all knew they would. But then um, Dexter Loomis showed up. He threw the, he threw the Undisputed Era in the trunk and drove off. So Lord knows where he took them. Um, you know, Velveteen Dream, he had a couple of spots, he did, um, he did the Dream Valley Driver, and for some reason he didn't do the Dream Valley Driver on the chair, because there were chairs in the ring, like, at one point, there were chairs scattered all over the ring, and he didn't do the Dream Valley Driver on the chairs, which was odd, but then he did, um, the Purple Rainmaker elbow, Adam Cole was sitting on a chair, and he gave him the Purple Rain elbow while Cole was sitting on a chair, but then when, when Dream had Cole down for the count, he stopped to talk shit. He was telling Cole, like, you know, the dream is over, the the era has come to an end. And then Adam Cole hit him in the nuts. And then he caught him with the Panama Sunrise on top of the chairs. And then he got the one, two, three. And I was just like, that was so underwhelming. Like, you know, and, I, and, and I'm almost, like, I'm mad. I'm, I'm actually mad. I, because I accidentally saw the news about Dream potentially getting the call up. And like I said, between between the rumor of him getting the call up, this match being fourth overall, I was just like, that's some bullshit. So it was very disappointing. I'm like, I'm about to start protesting WWE headquarters again. Cause, but whatever, I mean, so we'll probably see Dream on Raw, or, on Raw or SmackDown. Hopefully SmackDown, because there's a shitload of black wrestlers on Raw, and there's like two black wrestlers on SmackDown. So we need more black wrestlers on SmackDown. Like, the only black wrestlers on SmackDown is The New Day and Sasha Banks. And, um, and Naomi. So we need, uh, we need more black wrestlers on SmackDown. So hopefully... The dream will he'll he'll end up there when he gets the call up. But like I said, I mean, WWE got to do a better job of keeping this stuff under wraps because it made the entire championship match like very underwhelming. And plus, the match was pre-taped, so you know. And, and it was it was surprising that although the match was pre-taped, that nobody nobody leaked the um the finish, or at least nobody that I saw leaked the finish. But like I said it is what it is. Um, Adam Cole's still champion, and hopefully soon a competitor will rise up to take the title from him. Fifth match of the evening, Karrion Cross versus Tommaso Ciampa. Let's be real, this was Karrion Cross's first um, takeover, his first, you know, like, legit match where he's not fighting a jobber. Ciampa had no chance in hell of winning, <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. He beat the living fire out of Tommaso Ciampa. Ch Ciampa does sell very well, though, I, I do have to admit that, like, like Karrion, like Karrion Cross does a lot of like very devastating like impact moves, but Champa also does a good job of making him look like a million bucks and selling for him. And I, I honestly, I would love to see Karrion Cross versus Keith Lee because that's like two bulls in a china shop, and I want to see him throw Keith Lee around <laughs> like the way he was throwing Champa around. But um, you know, but like I said, you know, no no surprise here. Karrion Cross gets the W, and um, we'll see. Well, now we'll see if the if the Champa feud is over. Or if they're going to give him someone else, because if we are going to lose Velveteen Dream to the main roster, we've already lost Matt Riddle. Um, there's not a lot of new faces that are coming through that door, so the pickings are kind of scarce. So, um, I mean, to be honest, at this point, Keith Lee's the only person I can think of, you know, left who can um, fight unless they give him um, Dijakovic, but I heard he might get called up too. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Um, like I said, um, kudos to Karrion Cross and the lovely Scarlet, and we'll see um, what Triple H has in store for them going forward. And finally, the last match of the evening, the main event, uh, was the women's NXT Heavyweight Championship match, and that was after watching that horrible NXT Men's Championship match. The last thing I needed to see was Charlotte Flair in the main event. But <laughs> it, um, you know, the match started off a little, match started off a little sloppy. But um, you know, but the three of them got going. You know, like the match was at it was at a good pace. A lot of near falls. You know, a lot of um, a lot of high spots. You know, high spots. A lot of good action. But surprisingly, um, I have to give them credit for this because I mean, obviously Charlotte can't wrestle on three shows forever. And in the end, um, at the end, like Charlotte had put the figure eight on Rhea Ripley, and when Charlotte went to bridge, well, because she did the figure four, and then when Charlotte bridged to do the figure eight. Io Shirai came off the top rope with um, you know, with the uh, with the with the backwards moonsault, and she like Io Shirai's knees 
them shits hit Rhea Ripley dead in the face. <laughs> so, EO, after that, EO pinned Rhea Ripley to get the one, two, three, because Charlotte couldn't unlock her legs in time to break up the pin. But even if that wasn't supposed to be the moment where um, where EO Shirai won the title, she was gonna win the title off that regards because it looked like it dead ass looked like she caught she caught Rhea dead in the face with two knees. So hopefully Rhea Ripley was okay. And you know, and again now that Charlotte's gone, like I hope she's done with NXT now. And, you know, Io Shirai was a heel, Rhea Ripley's a face, so now we have two actual women who are on the NXT brand battling for the title now. So, it looks like it's going to be Io Shirai and um, Rhea Ripley going forward. And I'm good with that, I'm just glad Charlotte gone. So, <laughs> you know, so, yeah, that was it. Um, like I said, like, the match got off to a little rocky start, but it turned out pretty good in the end. So that was it, that was my review for NXT TakeOver In Your House. And, you know, overall, the show was kind of like 50-50. I mean, the, the women's six-man tag was good. The Keith Lee Johnny match was good, but you know, unfortunately, like the the Balor match was predictable. The Karrion Cross match was predictable. Um, you know, the 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 men's title match was whack, and you know, and you know, the women's match ended up being good mostly because Charlotte lost. So I'm like, the whole pay per view basically like broke even, but. I mean, but overall, like I said I would give it like I would give it like a six and a half, six and a half, maybe a seven. Um, it's a decent show. It was still a decent show. Like um, all the performers, you know, all the rest was put on a good show. So we'll see. Um, we'll we'll see what happens going forward. I guess you know. Again, so now, um, I am actually I'm interested in the women's division now. Um, it'd be nice to have some more um some more African American women in the mix in the uh in the women's division. We'll see how long it takes for Velveteen Dream. Chel and Chelsea Green and maybe um, Donovan Dajakovic. We'll see how long it takes for them to get the call up, you know, to the to the main roster, and we'll see how they replenish, you know, the NXT roster as well because they're losing a lot of people to the main roster. So the NXT got to replenish. So we got to bring in some new faces. Uh, they have, and, and you know, and then uh, shout out to Todd Pettengill because they had Todd Pettengill on there and he was making a lot of jokes. You know, he's making like, making fun of himself. You know, being like an old school host. They brought back the uh, the ice cream sandwich bars, the WWE, the wrestling ice cream sandwich bars. Pettengill made some jokes about you know calling the nine one the eight the, the nine hundred number you know to talk to like your favorite superstars or whatever. So you know it was uh, it, was, it was pretty cool. So like I said well, the show the show just wasn't bad. It's just that the predictability of a lot of things just sometimes it, it ruins it. So that was it. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about NXT Takeover in your house. What do you think is gonna happen going forward with what wrestlers? Um, Know, what views do you see happening in the near future? Let's uh, share some thoughts and get a conversation going. Keep it locked, keep it tight. Check out my channel for some more stuff, some more content. And until next time, as always, for NXT, I'm out this bitch!